Hey, what's up YouTube? TechSpar here with my very first OAuth2 implementation video. We're going to be using this library right here, Requests HTTP for Humans, uh, to use their OAuth lib to connect with a resource provider, specifically Spotify. We're going to be using one of their provided examples, so this is really just going to be a walkthrough, but in the end we're going to make that connection, authenticate properly, and then we're going to print out some very basic user profile kind of stuff. All right, well, let's get started here. Um, let's take a look at the example first. Um, so if you just pull up GitHub and then search for the organization requests slash requests again, dash OAuth lib should give us the correct repository. And yes, this is the right one, right? There's a readme, there's all sorts of information here you can read, but we are interested in the docs and the examples. We drill down to the bottom you'll see this spotify example it's an R rst file let's do it printing it on documentation and stuff but that's basically it this is the snippet of code we're going to be working for it's pretty manual so when we go through i'm going to be showing you guys how to do it but we're gonna have to like cut and copy and paste the tokens into the browser and, and stuff like that but at least it gives you an idea of how to get started and you can obviously modernize and improve upon this okay great well let's get to some coding finally right um we'll be using vs code open up a terminal uh, let's set up kind of like our working environment here so um oh, projects i like to put all my stuff here and i'm going to make a directory called spotify oauth and then from there, we're just going to make one simple file because that's the only thing we're going to be running, really. Um, so let's touch something called simple request.py. And then let's make sure we're using the right version of Python or we have the right version. Okay, so we're at 3.8. That's good. Um, Regardless, we're going to be using a virtual environment to install our dependencies. So to do that, we use this command here. Um, you probably want to spell things right though. Python 3-m. We're going to be invoking this module. And then the next um, argument you pass in is the name of the virtual environment directory or whatever. So, But this is pretty common. People do this a lot. They just duplicate it doesn't take very long there you go so to activate our virtual environment what you do is you use the source command and then you dig into this file into the bin there should be a script called activate so now we're in a virtual environment um, and if you don't totally understand what's going on here don't worry about that this is just basically making sure that when we install programs onto your computer we're doing it in this kind of isolated environment so that we don't mess with what's already set up into your you know kind of global operating system um so let's go back to the documentation here or the repository if you go to the you know to the root of it and read the readme they have the installation instructions right here so we're just going to copy that so that's going to install requests and this um, extension And do that and I believe if we open the folder that we created there it should detect oh it closes the terminal I'm sorry um, so we're gonna have to reactivate that um, source I think if you do a pip freeze, um, there we go. So pip freeze kind of lists all the things that you've installed. So you can see that we have requests and we have requests OAuth lib. So I think we're basically ready to get started with the example.
Okay, well, um, now we got to go back to the repository. Uh, sorry for the back and forth. And go back to our example, the original we found, and let's copy all this. We're going to need to do a little bit of cleanup because it's not exactly like a pure Python form there. Whoops, that's the wrong short key. And if you are using Visual Studio, they got a few cool shortcuts. I know lots of IDDs have similar ones, but um, here, if you kind of highlight your selection and use the command D, um, one at a time, it's going to go through and select every instance of that selection. So there we go. We've got all our triple arrows. We're going to clean those up. And then there's some dots here. This is basically the same situation. So command D again, backspace, delete, and we'll backspace. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. All right. It's not the prettiest thing, but it's saving us a little bit of time. Did I? I did. Port. I did destroy a little bit here. Um, there, that should do it, I hope. There we go. How badly did I butcher this? And then there's one more down here. Okay, so I believe we're all cleaned up now. So let's, um, well, let's, yeah, let's just run it. Let's see what happens, right? For fun. Simple request. Okay, so it comes down, it sets these variables, blah, 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 scope. Um, all right, imports down here, creates an OAuth2 session object, and then invokes authorization URL on authorization base URL. Please go here and authorize. Please go here and authorize. Okay, so let's follow this link. Uh, what's the there we go oh looks like something's not working invalid client yeah and then they would actually have returned a redirect url and it's going to have a token at the end of it and then we can plop that in here but we don't have that so it just errors out so I guess the first thing that we're gonna to need to do here is fill in these client ID and secrets. So um, I found that if you uh, just Google Spotify developer, you'll get the, um, right, the developer site. And I believe you can use their, just a regular Spotify account. I think you, you need one actually to log in. So I'm already kind of logged in. You can see I've been playing around with this already, but uh, let's just make another one. So you'll get something very similar after you sign in and you'll create an app and you go my Spotify app. And this is going to be description text, text, text sparrow walk. Uh, hold on, hold on. I can spell this, I promise. Um, and there's obviously a bunch of documentation and things that you need to look out for. You know, you don't want to abuse their APIs or whatever, but um, um, for what we're concerned, here we go. We, we're interested in getting this client ID here. So we'll copy that and drop that in here. And um, there's a link right below, it says show client secret. Now, obviously I'm gonna reset this after this video, but um, you don't wanna share this with anybody. This is um, critical information. You also wanna make sure that while you're dropping it in here, this is just an example, right? You don't ever wanna commit that string in your repository or in your project or save it anywhere. There are lots of different kind of methods of setting that up when you want to do it for real, like in a production scenario. And, you know, there's a lot of different ways, but you know, the basic way is, is just setting it as an environment variable. But for an example's sake, we're going to do it this way, but definitely don't commit this to your repository and don't use this in any sort of 
don't use this method as a kind of a production environment. You, you'll get yourself into some trouble. Um, the redirect URI, this always kind of threw me for a loop because I'm not like formally an expert on uh, OAuth really, but um, turns out this doesn't have to be something that you specifically own or whatever, like for this example, it can be anything. I'm just gonna make it my, my little personal website. Developer's life for me. And um, I believe it does need to be HTTPS. Or that could, that could be up to the resource provider. Uh, I figure it's safer to go HTTPS anyways. So there, we have these three pieces now. Um, let's go ahead and give it a shot. So we're gonna go and authorize. Invalid redirect URI. Now, the reason that is happening is because we need to kind of whitelist our redirects within our app here. So if you go and you edit the settings, you'll see that our redirect URI, we want to add one. Oh, we type it in first. Developers live for me. Add. And save. The data for your app has been saved. Okay, we're gonna try this again. So we'll get out of this, clear this terminal, and run it one more time. Okay, hit the link, boom. Now it's happy with my redirect. So it's asking me, it's basically asking me like, as if you were the user signing into the app, like, hey, can I, you, you know, can I authenticate with Spotify? Boom. So. This is the redirect. So it finally landed on the redirect. We can grab this um, URL here. And you can see that it's now appended with this, you know, URL query parameter code. And that's the good stuff that we want. So you copy the whole thing and you can drop it in here. Hit enter. And there is our um, Spotify user data, right? That fell into this scope here, playlist read and user read email. So we have the display name, the email, you know, external URLs, I don't know everything here, followers. You know, obviously there won't be anything here because this is um, just my, I don't know, whatever, fake Spotify, but um, it's fake followers. Fake Spotify account. Okay, I can speak there. Um, so basically, that's that's it. There you go. Uh, I hope you guys are going to find this useful and help you get started using this library. Um, 